Hi everyone, so today I want to show you this super cute little milk carton box um, and it's got a lid. I love it, absolutely love it. So this I saw um, Poodle's Paper Craft do um, and so I followed her tutorial and I absolutely love this. I just think it's so nice. I've used um, papers from Little Red Robin and Friends and then this is from a really old pack, a Trim Craft first edition pack called Merry Little Christmas. Um, yeah, so I've just used that. And then I've just used a bit of a bit of ribbon that I think came off a pair of pyjamas, actually. <laughs> and a little bow that was, I think was a Dovecraft bow. So it's not quite the same red, but it does. It's it's fine. I don't mind it. And then inside you've got a nice sturdy box, decent size, and a gorgeous little lid. And it just slots together. I just think it's really, really sweet. So you can fit quite a lot in there. It measures two and a half by two and a half by four. So it's a good size. So yeah, so let's get into it. Okay, so for this box, you're going to need, for the base, you need a piece of card that is 7 and 7 sixteenths by 7 and 7 sixteenths. Basically, it's seven, just slightly smaller than 7.5 by 7.5. So if you find your 7.5 mark and just come in one little tiny smidge and do the same on the other side, you will end up with the right size card. And then for the lid, you need a piece that is 3 by 10.5. Now, I'm using paper not card so this is about 140 160 gsm whereas this is 200 it just is easier to kind of fold and also you want a, th a thicker one for the base because it's obviously the base so we're going to start with the base and what we're going to do is we're going to score at two and a half on all four sides now i appreciate you probably can't see my score lines but we'll you'll see them in a in a moment if you bring in your lid, you're going to score at two and a half, at five, at seven and a half, and at ten. And just make sure that if you've got a right way up pattern like I have, that you have it like that. So the same way that mine is. And then what you want to do is you're going to turn it round. And if you want the pattern to be at the top, then that needs to be um so if you're working on this scoreboard where you're scoring right to left the top needs to be facing that way if you've got a scoreboard that works from left to right you need to turn it so that the pattern's facing that way okay so you'd have it that way around if you're scoring this way but i'm going to be scoring this way around so we're going to score at one inch and at two and a half inches Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead now and just quickly fold all of my um, lines going up. And then I'm also going to fold this top one as well. And I'm just going to fold it outwards. It's not going to be a mountain, it's going to be a valley. Like that. And then this one will be a mountain. The one at the bottom will be a mountain. So you've got that. Once you've done all your burnishing, you're then going to turn this over and we need to add red tape all the way along the inside here. You also need to add red tape just along this tab here. And you also need to add red tape just on these two pieces here. So obviously that's folded there that's folded there and that's folded there so you're going to need to add red tape on these two top pieces okay so you should end up with that so we're going to turn this over now i'm just going to fold that over and then we're going to fold that and stick that onto there now we are going to pinch the sides now if you want to be exact you can go ahead and you know kind of score them in advance but i'm going to pinch them that's what um poodles did so i'm going to do the same let's just quickly take off as well this bit of backing here because that is kind of in the way of that piece there so we've got the long one long piece there we go like that so then what we want to do now before I go ahead and pinch it like and you know take all the glue off what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead now quickly 
and pinch this so that that's folded like that so find where your your taped pieces are and then you just want to what i'm going to do is i'm just literally just measuring up those bits but i'm only going to pinch at the top I'm not pinching anywhere else just the top there like that okay because you want this bit to be whole and so so what i was saying was if you want you can measure halfway and then score from there to there from there to there and then that way you know you're not going to end up with you know if we just do like that can you see how you end up with your little little cartony box thing so what we're going to do now is i'm going to take off all of the backing on the inside here first of all this is where it gets a bit precarious because obviously you've got a lot of stickiness going on there so let's take that off and then i'm going to then i think i'm then going to take off all the the stickiness here as well because if i try and do one bit without doing the other it could get a bit precarious so we'll take the backing off of this side and then i think because i've already given it a um I've really given it a pinch already, so that helps because then it knows where it needs to go. I think if I made this again, I would score it beforehand because I feel like that's going to help matters. And also because I'm using paper, not card, it's kind of a little bit, it's a little bit tricky. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that there like that. I just need to make sure this all sticks down nice and flat. There we go, like that. Okay, so there we are. Now I've got a bit of a rough edge there. So if you wanted to, you could put a bit of um, you could put a bit of a, a ribbon over the top, which I might end up doing, or just leave it as it is. It's really up to you. So that is that. And then we want to go ahead and sort out. I quite like the underside. It looks quite cool. But as I say, if you, you can neaten that up, that bit there can be neatened up if you kind of pre-score it. If you pre-scored that, that would look a lot neater. But I like that. It's quite cute quite cute so for the base what we want to do now i appreciate you cannot see my lines so normally what you would do you basically got a grid here so one two three four five six seven eight, nine squares is what you've got so normally what we do is we would cut um you know down here down here and then stick these two squares in the middle there but you kind of want it to be quite solid so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, let me get some scissors that are actually not sticky. I'm going to cut straight up this line here till I get to the other one going the other way, like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to notch this out ever so slightly there, like that. And I'm just going to trim a tiny bit off the end. Not much, just a little bit, like that. Okay, I'm going to do that all the way around. So I'm going to, so I'm, I'm literally going to have it like that. I'm going to turn it and do the same thing here. So you're doing it like a windmill. So we're going to cut all the way up here like that. And notch it ever so slightly. Like that. And then I'm going to trim a tiny bit off the end. Like that. Okay, then I'm going to turn it again, and I'm always going to do this bottom left-hand corner. And if you keep turning it, then you won't get in a muddle as to which bit you're doing. Because I know myself, if I try and do it with it flat like this, I'm going to get in a muddle. So let's just trim this little bit off the edge here. So that's that one done. I'm going to turn it again, and we're going to do it again. So we're going to trim up here, notch it slightly like that and then trim off a tiny bit off the edge like that now you need to get your burnishing tool and whatever you want to be on the outside so i want this um tartan to be on the outside if you want to you can always do your, you know scoring your burnishing um before you actually start cutting out i prefer to do it after i don't know why i suppose that like, you'd be able to see your lines better your score lines better if you do it beforehand but anyway um, so let's just go ahead and fold along all these lines. So there we go. So we've got that. So now what we want to do is go ahead and now we can add tape or we can add glue. So that's going to come over like that. That's going to come over like that. 
So that's going to come over like that, and that is going to come over like that. So you end up with a nice solid box. So you've kind of reinforced it all the way around. Um, so that is what we're heading for. So I'm just going to go ahead now and stick that down. You can go with red tape or you can go with glue. I'm going to go with glue because it gives me a bit more wiggle time. The only thing is I will need to peg each side as I go round just to make sure it's stuck. But I just think if I use tape, I could come a cropper. So let's just go ahead and add that in there like that. Stick it down. And this is why you took a little bit off each tab each time. Because then what happens is you're not going to end up with this coming too far and as long as you've got a busy paper inside or, you know, you're not really going to notice that little thing. And that's another reason why you've got that there as well. Just make sure it's level along the top. There we go. Let's peg that. And then we'll go ahead and stick this one. So I'm going to continue sticking these down. Um, and then you end up with that little box and then this lid should perfectly fit on the top. I think, think that looks beautiful. So then all we need to do is go ahead and add a little bit of decoration. So I found this red ribbon uh, that's got stitching around it, which I really like. And I think this came off an old pair of pyjamas or something, <laughs> I can't remember. But I'm going to put that around the top, around the lid like that. And then I've found, because I didn't want to have to make a bow, I know I could make a bow if I wanted to, but... I've got these, it's not quite the same red, but it's still got the stitching on it, so I think I might use that. And I've also got a tartan one. I think I'm going to go with the red, the red one with the stitching. So I'm going to go ahead and add some red tape all around the outside of my box on the lid. I'm going to work out which one I want on the front. I think I'm going to have that on the front because the deer is right there. So let's just add this on, going all the way around. You could definitely use... Um, I think you could definitely use a 200 GSM for this lid, but I think if you do, you definitely need to score it rather than just pinching it. Um, that would be my advice on that one. I mean, I haven't actually ever made it with the 200 GSM, but I'm pretty sure because it feels quite flimsy. This lid does. Um, I wouldn't. You don't want to go too thick because otherwise, it's not going to fit over the box. But I do think that you could go a little bit thicker than what I have here. I haven't quite got enough to go around the outside, typical. So let's just cut a little bit off here. Stick that on there. And then we can go ahead and add our ribbon. So there you have your cute little um, milk carton box that has a lid. I just think that's really cute. I think it's really, really nice. It's a really nice box. And obviously, as a, you know, you don't have to use it just for Christmas. You could use it for birthdays as well. But I just think that's really cute. Uh, I think as well, you know what? You, I think you could make this into a little house as well. I think it'd make a nice little house because you could make this like the roof, and then have it like a little gingerbread house. I just think it's really, really sweet. Really sweet. I definitely want to make one with a card lid rather than a paper lid. But yeah, really like that. So thank you, Poodles Paper Craft, for that one. I'm very impressed. Very impressed with that. Um, the finished uh, size of it is two and a half by two and a half by four. So it's a nice size. It's a good size. So yes, I hope you like that. Please like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you next time. Bye.